When doctors learn to answer the big question, the world will become a safer place. Because when patients or when people are dealing with health conditions, they tend to feel disempowered. They feel like their choices are limited. And we tend to feel like we ask the question, do these people really care? Do they even really love me? Therefore, I suggest the most fundamental role of healthcare providers is to empower people by making sure they are aware of their choices and of course, one way or another, either by word or by action, by posture, answering, of course, that big question. But here's the challenge. Most of us are not aware that there's a big question being asked all the time. We think that people are asking about their CAT scan results. They are. And we think that they're asking about their blood work results. They are. But what they're not saying out loud with their lips and their teeth and their cheeks is, do you guys really care? Once we realize that that is the big question, it'll change everything. It'll change the way we use our usual communication tools and techniques, even the way we ask open-ended questions brought you in today. We ask that all the time. But when we are aware that there is that underlying question, the way we use those words will leave the person in front of us feeling like, wow, they really are concerned about my chief concerns. It'll change the way we ask clarifying questions, of course, and reflective questions. A person will feel in the depths of their heart that they really want to know the details of what concerns you the most. It changes everything when we know there's an underlying question. It'll change the way we give people affirmations when they are making healthcare achievements. Um, you know, what they'll come to realize and when they really uh, hear from us and hear from our hearts is that we are really not only acknowledging their health-related achievements, but we're celebrating them also. It will change everything when we really understand that big question is being asked all the time. It will change how we give summaries, uh, how we make summarization statements, therefore, um, and patients will really feel that it's important to us that they are current about what's going on in their own care. We're talking about communication tools and techniques that we use all the time. Maybe we don't call them tools and techniques, but um, they're language tools and techniques that we use all the time. It'll change the way, also, that we examine people. Maybe we won't go up and pull the covers off their feet to check and see if they have swelling. Uh, maybe we won't go into their personal space the same way when we realize that they have this big question. Do these people care? We'll change all that. Because our intentions will change to address this big underlying question. It'll change, also, the way we explore and inspire interest in certain healthcare endeavors. Everything will change when we change our, when we adjust our intentions. It'll change also how we use normalizing statements because, thanks goodness, none of us wants our patients who has a new diagnosis or just starting with new medications to feel like they're the only one and that they're isolated. And so we use normalizing statements. It's normal, you know, it feels natural. It's natural to have the concerns you have. And of course, it'll change how we approach people's habits, some of those habits that are not helping them. We'll be able to talk about them and ask them, what is it that you're getting out of, let's say, this habit or that habit? And patients won't feel judged. As a matter of fact, they'll feel the interest, they'll feel the care, and they'll feel the concern. We'll be able to help them in that way. Once we know and realize that there is an underlying question all the time when we go for care, people are always asking, do healthcare workers actually care? Once we know that, and that's a big question, by the way, once we realize that, all of us, everything changes. It'll change how we leverage our presence, how we leverage our presence in patients' rooms and care stations and elevators everywhere, right? Cafeterias, the parking lot, 
even online, people are watching us to see that these people care. It'll change how we leverage our posture. Are we standing defensively with our, arm, with our arms folded and crossed? Are we standing at all? Are we touching somebody's shoulder? What kind of facial expression are we using? What's the tone of our voice? We'll leverage our posture when we realize there's an underlying question that people are asking all the time. It'll make a huge difference. It'll change also the way we introduce ourselves. People will really feel that, you know, this person really respects the way I self-identify. And they're also acknowledging the people that are here to support me because we want them to feel cared for. We want them to feel loved because we know that question is always there. It'll change how we orient people. I mean, let's face it. We've seen people come in with TIAs, CHF, syncope, falls, dizziness, all sorts of things. We have a pretty good idea how these usually go, right? We can orient people. And when we orient people, with the intention of helping them to feel cared for and respected, they will really feel a lot better. They'll get the real value that we want to offer them. It'll change also the way we listen to people. We'll listen to people in a way that we do right now. We'll hear them, but patients will feel heard and they'll feel understood just from us realizing that they, they have that background question in their mind that they're not necessarily voicing. You guys know that people are asking this question all the time, right? If this was your mother, or in other words, if you really cared, the question is always there. It'll change also the way we discuss progress. We'll let patients know. You came in here, we were not sure if you were stable or not. Now we know. We got certain consultant input got your blood work back. You're making progress. It'll change. Everything will change when we realize that there's this underlying question always being asked. Do healthcare workers really care? We use collaborative words more. We use we more. We're all in this together. We want the same outcomes that you want. It's your mom, but I take it here personally. You want the great outcome? I want it too. We're all in this together. Me, you, your husband. This is why we get up to go to work every day. We want the same outcomes that you want. It'll change the way we use framing the discussions to let people know that there's a certain priority in the care we're providing. There's a certain order and there's a certain direction of the care. Won't that help us? Now we're able to let people know what our capacities are, what our limits are. And when people realize that we are following guidelines, that we are following protocols, that we are bringing all of this experience to care for them, they start to feel the value more, and they start to feel the care for, and they start to feel the, guess what, love more. It'll change everything. It'll change the way we also respect people for their ideas. Sometimes we do not meet people's expectations, right? But we can acknowledge I know your expectations. I'm sorry we didn't meet them. We tried. And thank you so much for the opportunity for giving us a shot. Now, some people, some people might be wondering, where in the world are we going to get the time to do all this? And why are we taking on doctors? Well, in healthcare, doctors do tend to be natural leaders. There's probably not another group that has sacrificed a significant portion of their lives to care for humanity during the most critical and crucial states. And people are looking for healthcare leaders to provide uh, their voices, right? What we're talking about is how to have more impact. And when we are able to not just communicate and appeal to one another's intellects, but also to one another's hearts, that will be huge, right? One another's hearts. That's where that big question is sitting, just waiting to be answered. When we're able to do that, It'll save time because trust will build. And when trust builds, now doors and needle times come down, lens of steady come down. Okay? And um, everything 
goes quite wonderfully. How about our enjoyment? It also goes up. And the feeling of burnout goes down. But we've seen the alternative to not addressing that big question early on, or at all. We've seen people start to take fear into their own hands. We've seen them start to become confrontational. Some people we've seen become antagonistic. And some people, when they feel like nobody cares, can make it dangerous for all of us. It doesn't have to be that way, right? Now that we know there's a big underlying question waiting to be asked, we can professionally set the stage. We can be more proactive. We can set the tone. And we can set the action to create experiences that make everybody feel safe, valued, and respected. In other words, love. When doctors, when all healthcare providers, and when all of society learns to answer the big question, it'll change everything.